Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over the Vintage EQ module in Ozone 7. It is based off of a piece of hardware from the 1950s. So we will uh, open it up. And uh, this might look a little bit different from the uh, EQ that we were looking at. Uh, this is not a parametric EQ, although it does have somewhat of a readout up on top. Parametric EQ meaning that we can take each band and adjust it um, freely. Uh, frequencies are not fixed. In the vintage EQ, the frequencies are fixed. Uh, 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 45 hertz, uh, uh, 8,000 hertz, uh, 10,000 hertz, they're fixed. And uh, you can only boost. So you might think it's kind of limited, but this is, it's just, it's a different way of EQing. It forces you to use your ears a bit more. It adds something special it's uh just generally interesting so uh we'll start off with what makes this unique uh the original hardware had a low boost and a low cut and it said do not use both of these at the same time so naturally engineers kind of you know are pretty stoned and they end up doing things that they're not supposed to do uh, and they use the low boost and the low cut at the same time, and it creates a really interesting result. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll stay at uh, 45, and uh, when we boost the low, we'll see the little readout here. You'll notice that it's, it's very unique looking as we increase it, right? As we increase it, it's like a bump that affects things. As we increase it more, it turns into a shelf. And you notice that it just kind of it raises this, but it also affects this. It's a very unique kind of curve. Anyway, so yeah, we'll just play a little something. And I will boost the lows. That's a little bit too obnoxious. Less is more when you're when you're mastering. Uh, so we have that. We can boost that, but we can also cut. And what that does, just on its own, is it's kind of like a shelf. But when we combine these two together, we get a little dip here, even more so. So it kind of it brings it out, but it doesn't add any like ringiness to it. That we were hearing before. Now this sounds, you know, quite pleasing, and that's the magic of this piece of equipment. Right? A little bit too it's distorting, it doesn't sound too pleasant. Boost that up. And uh, yeah, sounds fantastic. So you'll notice that there's a little curve here. We can go up to a high boost. We can we can select uh, frequency ranges, and they're fixed. So we'll go eight eight k boost highs a bit there. Actually, we'll boost around four. Less is less is more. All right. Then we have our high cut. Now I don't use this. Um, because it's not as, you know, it's not a high cut. It's more of a, a high, like a shelf. But it does add something. I don't know what it is, but it adds something. You can also add a bit of thump, like a, a bell curve. You can notice it right here. Um, if you're lacking a bit of something, this is mainly for like acoustic music or something like that. If you kick drum. Like the reason why these are fixed is because these are frequencies that were known um, for like acoustic instruments like mind you this was in the 50s so you know they kind of you know it was like kind of a swiss army knife it's like okay we want to enhance this snare drum okay so that we want the bottom of 1k to uh you know you'd, you'd boost uh 1k uh 1000 hertz to bring up the snare drum right anyway you get the idea right and then you have your mid cut uh to varying degrees so this is a neat little as you increase it it goes down which is weird and there's no resonance control right so uh yeah and then high mid all self-explanatory it's a it's a bit like a like a console eq and uh yeah it's not paramedic par paramet parametric anyway uh that is the uh vintage eq uh, the low boost, low cut technique, um, 
I like I like doing it. It adds something. It adds a lot of low end um, experiment with it, and uh, yeah, that's what you know. Recording is all about doing things you shouldn't be doing. Um, yeah. Anyway, hope you learned stuff. Uh, take care and have a good one.